Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another brand new tumbler tutorial. In this video, we are going to make a beach tumbler, but we're gonna put a little bit of a twist or a swirl on it. <laughs> we're gonna do some 3D waves and just create a really pretty tumbler for the summertime. I had a lot of fun in making this cup and I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you do, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button down below. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos and let me know what you think of this design down below in the comments. As always, I'll have everything I'm using in this video listed and linked down below in the description box. I'll also have links to all of my social media pages, my Facebook group, and my exclusive mentorship group if you would like to join either of those. They are great communities of wonderful makers. So I'll have all of that down below for you as well. And I think that's it. I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's go. We're going to start by base painting our tumbler. I'm using a 30 ounce modern from Craft Haven for this design and I'm starting with a royal blue spray paint and I'm just painting a pretty large swirl pattern on my cup and essentially what I'm doing here is creating a beach scene. I'm just doing it in a swirl. So I'm going to go in with my light kind of aqua color right next to that and then we're going to take gold metallic spray paint and do that for the sand right next to our darker color. And then for the white I want to put that next to my lightest teal color because that's going to be like the foam of the water. And then for the water you can do as many different tones of blue and teal and turquoise all of those colors as you want. I did a dark turquoise, a blue, and a light aqua and then I kind of blended with another kind of like medium teal color. Your base paint really doesn't matter that much. We're going to put so much glitter on this cup that you're not going to be able to see it. So if you want to just do really simple base painting that is totally okay. Okay, so our tumbler has a very light coat of epoxy on it. It is a little thicker than I typically would use for the epoxy method. Um, we're gonna use a lot of glitters on this design. So I wanted to ensure that the chunkier cuts would kind of almost seep into the epoxy a little bit, which typically you don't want. Um, but the more glitter you put on a cup and the more you kind of pile on and layer, you want a little bit more epoxy. So instead of like two milliliters, I probably used between like four and five. So not a ton more, just enough to kind of help us a little bit in that glitter like soaking in, if that makes sense. So we've got our cup that looks like this and we're gonna start building our beach swirl. Now when I do my swirls or my ombres or anything where I'm putting a lot of glitter down, I like to start with my darkest, chunkiest first. So in this case, that's going to be Atlantis. Atlantis is kind of like a, not, I wouldn't call it like a duo chrome, but it's kind of got like a little bit of a shift to it, which makes it really nice and easy to blend. So I'm gonna go in right here on this dark part where we have spray painted. And I'm gonna go extremely light in this first round of glittering with all of the colors because I really, again, wanna build up a nice kind of fade and blend between everything. Now you can see I got a little bit of it in this blue part, but that's totally okay, it's not a big deal. We're gonna lay a lot of glitter down and it's just gonna help in the blend, no big deal. So the next dark color we have is Head Over Teals or Kokomo. I'm gonna put Kokomo down first. And I'm gonna go right next to where I put Atlantis. Again, going really, really light. Just kind of letting the glitter fall where it wants. I'm doing really, as you can see, like light shaking movements here. Cause I just want really light, really, really light coverage. Like I'm going so light that I'm not even picking up the glitter on my paper because it's like so little that I don't even want to, you know? Next is Head Over Teals. Head Over Teals is a very chunky mix, so I'm gonna put it right next to Kokomo, but also like in Kokomo, if that makes sense. So I'm aiming really high. I don't want a ton of this to lay down because it's got really big pieces in it. And I kind of just wanna blend, but just a little bit. We'll add some extra just dimension 
into our tumbler. So very, very light. Next, I'm gonna take Coronation, which is another really pretty chunky teal. And I'm gonna put that right on top of Head Over Teals. This color kind of matches Kokomo a little bit. Like it's got that same color, I think, in it. Um, so it's gonna blend really well with Kokomo. It's just got some bigger square cut pieces in there too. that are gonna just add a lot of dimension and everything when we layer on. Like you can see how dimensional that is and just like how, I don't know, I just really like it. <laughs> when you layer a whole bunch of different glitter cuts and colors and sizes and shapes and all that, when you lay all that together, it just like looks increasingly better in my opinion. Next color we're gonna take is jojoba. I don't know why I said it like that. You don't have to, uh, you can just ignore that. I'm gonna take this and put it right over where we put um, coronation, but I'm also kind of letting it fall into that super light teal section. This has a little bit of like a green, you can see that kind of green tint. And I feel like the ocean kind of has that too, so I wanted to add that in there. Next we're gonna take Kaneohe which is one of my absolute favorite glitter colors of all time. And I'm gonna put that where the light paint is. And I'm also going over, as you can see, into the dark sections. I'm starting to build that blend. The lighter the colors get, the more heavy handed I go. So when we get into those lighter colors, I want to build up the coverage with a more heavy hand so that when we go back in with these darker colors and start to blend, we've already got a really good base of light color down so that it doesn't look contaminated, it just looks blended. So there's what we've got with Kaneohe faded into our dark water. And now we're going to, I'm gonna clean this up and keep this as a mix. Like a pretty blue teal mix, we'll use it for something. Oh yeah, that's pretty. And now I'm gonna go in with Athena, which is our chunky gold, another one of my absolute faves. And we're gonna follow that on the gold painted section. So we're blending just a little bit towards the white. We're going really, really light towards this white section, but into the dark, I'm gonna start to go a little bit more heavy because we've already got that good base of dark down. So we can start to blend our light gold into that darker section. It's just like, uh, you can see it kind of just fades a little bit. And then finally for our chunky cuts, I'm gonna take Parabatai and I'm just going to kind of go pretty heavy because it's our lightest color. And I really wanna build that base of white up before we go back in with all of these other colors that we're gonna lay on top. And as I lay it down, I'm letting it fall into the Kaneohe and into the gold. Those are both pretty solidly based now, so I don't really care if the glitter migrates in just like that. So this is what our chunkies look like right now. And now we're going to add all of the fine cuts and really build a nice fade and blend with the colors. So coming back around again, we're gonna go to our darkest color. And this is the fine cut of Atlantis. This is YMBB or hashtag YMBB. And I'm gonna go really lightly again. This is our dark color, so we wanna go super light with it. I'm gonna go kind of high and just layer right over where we laid Atlantis. And I'm just letting it kind of fall into the other two sections that are next to it, but not too, too much. I don't wanna over pour, but I do wanna to start to build that blend. So you can see it kind of just reinforces that dark blue section, the deepest part of our water. And you can always go back and add more. So if you go really light and then later you wanna add more, you can. There's no rule saying you can't go back and just keep going as much as you want. Next, we're gonna take Weekend at Bernie's and we're gonna lay that right next to where we put hashtag YMBB over our darker teal section. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm going maybe a little bit more heavy with this color, but not too much. I just wanna leave a little bit of space for the other colors that we're gonna to try to blend in. But there's Weekend at Bernie's on top of the dark turquoise. Now getting into the lighter teals, we're gonna take Alice. And I'm gonna lay that kind of like where I put jojoba a little bit, not quite into the Kaneohe section, but kind of over the dark teal, moving into that lighter teal. We just don't wanna to go too heavy on the lighter teal side because we wanna fill that in with a lighter color. So there's Alice blended with Weekend and Bernie's, Weekend at Bernie's. 
Weekend in Bernie's, the new spinoff. Now, before I get into the lighter colors, I'm going to tap off the excess here so I don't contaminate my light colors. Okay, now I'm going to go in with 10, 12, 13 on that light, light teal section. And I'm going to start to go, like I did earlier, I'm going to go more heavy handed with these lighter colors to really fill in the space and establish that light color before we go in with another round of dark. So as I take this light color, you can see I'm putting it onto this dark color and just blending those so that you really can't see where one color ends and the other begins. That's kind of my rule for a really good fade. If you look at the cup and you can't tell where one color like stops and the other color starts, if it just really flows, Okay, so now that we've got this light color down, we're gonna go in with Goddess because that's our gold, obviously. And I'm going to, again, blend pretty heavy on this navy blue color, the YMBB side, and lighten up as I fade towards the white because we haven't put our fine cut white down yet. So I don't wanna cover all of that up with gold because I still need to put some white down. But blending into the navy section is totally fine because we've already done that fine cut. So there's the gold. And now we're gonna do our fine white. For the fine white, we are going to use Opal Majesty. And I'm gonna put that right over where we put Pair of a Tie. And I am not being light-handed with this at all. I'm gonna just let it go wherever it wants. It's a white. It's going to blend perfectly with everything we already have down. So don't be shy with this color. Just let it go where it wants to, no biggie. So there's that. Now, if you want to, you can be done here, or you can go in again with some extra fine cut glitters to further your blend. That's what I'm gonna do. If I have a fine cut for that color, I'm gonna layer it on. It doesn't hurt, and I like to make my blends as good as I can, so I'm gonna go in with the extra fines next. So for the dark extra fine, I'm gonna take Lapis. Lapis, Lapis. Um, and that's the extra fine cut of the two previous glitters we used, Atlantis and Hashtag YMBB. And you can see I'm just going over that same dark blue section, but also the dark teal section and the gold section. I'm going a little bit lighter as I go into the gold section, just because the contrast there is a little bit higher and I don't want it to look muddy or weird. But into this teal section, we can just kind of go crazy. And it's just gonna fill in and make that blend even more seamless. For the dark teal, we're going to use Mr. Lomax. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go pretty heavy and I'm going to go into that dark blue section and also of course into the darker teal section where this glitter matches to further improve our blending. We're gonna use Little Mermaid next on that kind of medium teal tone. Again, the same process going pretty heavy here just filling in all that space. I'm going heavy towards the darker teal section this way, but as I get into the lighter teal section, just as I have with all of the other fades or the colors, I'm gonna go really light as we get into that lighter teal. On the lighter teal section, I'm taking 45 Bistro, and I'm gonna go right over, of course, the light teal section. And now this color is really, really light, so I'm gonna let it go a little bit into the white like more than I typically would for these fades because I want that to look really seamless. So I'm going a little bit more heavy handed on both sides as I add this. For my extra fine gold, I'm gonna take Champagne. Now this is not an exact match for Athena and Goddess, but it's kind of a lighter gold color. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of that to help bring the gold back to the forefront and blend all the other colors together. And on the bottom, you can see, I'm just kind of doing whatever falls there. It doesn't really matter. Before we add our extra fine white, we're gonna tap off the excess again. Because we don't want any of that to fall into our white glitter as we shake it off. For the extra fine white, I'm using special edition flurries. And I'm, again, gonna go pretty heavy handed with this. It's going to blend with everything perfectly. So I'm just going to basically cover this entire section of the cup. Now 
Now from here, if you want to go back through and improve your blend in any of those areas, like I said earlier, you totally can. You can go back and forth with your colors as many times as you want, especially if you're using the epoxy method, you have a really long working time. So you can go back and forth between just two areas of your cup. If you want to do the whole thing again, you can. Just really go back and forth and work on it until you're happy with the fade you have. I'm going to go through on a few areas and just try to touch them up. Maybe improve the fade a little bit or just reinforce a color that may be faded into the background. Um, just work on your fade until you're happy with the way it looks. Okay, so here's what the fade looks like. The top rim of the cup is a little wonky just because the epoxy kind of moved down there. I probably did put a little bit too much on, but that's okay. We're going to put our cup on our turner because of that. If you use less epoxy and you don't have this kind of like pooling at the rim of your cup, you don't need to put it on your turner. You can just put it on a drying rack but I don't want it to start to fall down as it cures. So I'm just going to put it on the turner, no big deal. But here's what the fade looks like. I really like how it looks, I'm so excited. This makes me think of the water, like this deep teal color is giving me um, everything I need right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna set this on my turner and let this dry probably overnight. Um, and then we will work on the rest of it tomorrow. See you guys soon, bye. This next step is totally optional. I just wanted to add a little bit extra like dimension, just a little extra something. So I'm gonna take some mica powders. These are all from Simply Sarah Custom Creations. I'm using Elena, Ben, Pop's Beard, and Salamander Sparkle. And I'm gonna mix each of those into their own little medicine cup with about like three-ish milliliters of epoxy mixed in as well. And I'm gonna put a coat of regular epoxy on my cup first. The more epoxy you put on, or like the thicker your coat is, the more those micas will move around. So I think my coat was probably about like 20 milliliters. Now, I don't want this to overtake all of the work and glittering that we just did. So I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit of each of these colors into their matching section. And as you can see, I'm just kind of stringing it on with my popsicle stick, kind of just laying it on there. Now, you can do a lot of this if you want, or you can totally skip it. Like I said, this is totally optional. Um, I'm just doing a little bit here just to add that kind of like watery, flowy look to it. And I just want to keep everything really, really soft and subtle. So once I've done all of the application, I'm going to go in with my gloved hand and just kind of like mess them up a little bit. Like I want to disperse them, kind of make them look a little bit more organic, break up the kind of like stripey look of it. I don't want this to look like a typical like mica swirl and that kind of thing. I just want it to be very soft with that just like little bit of shimmer in there. So I'm going to go through, break all of that up, hit everything again with my torch really quick, and I'm going to let this sit and spin for about like 8 to 12 hours, and then we'll be ready to move on to our next step. Okay, so we're going to start, as you can see here, by just building like the stopping point for where our wave is going to crash, basically. So I'm just taking this and running it along kind of in the gold section, not covering up the gold section, but kind of like over where the white and the gold are blended together, just as a guideline for me for like where my waves are going to crash onto the shore. So I've got that there. And now I'm gonna start to kind of build up my waves here. And there's really no like wrong way to do this. Like the ocean is just, you know, it just kind of does what it wants. So I'm going to start to just build this up. You can kind of, if you want to like create little shapes or, you know, kind of make it look organic and natural, you obviously can. So that's kind of my starting point for my ocean waves. Now I'm gonna take this smaller brush here and I'm gonna start to create that like kind of crashing like foamy look almost. And I'm just taking my brush very quickly as you can see and I'm just kind of fading out this end here. And we're gonna build up a little bit more. So 
If it looks weird to you right now, it, that's okay. We just really want to get this kind of fade so that it looks like the waves are kind of coming in to the shore. So I've got barely just a little bit of this on my brush, but I'm really using what we've already laid down and just kind of pulling that out as our first little layer of wave. There we've got our first little set and we're just going to let this sit for a little bit and then we'll go in and add our next little round. All right, this has been sitting for maybe like 25 to 30 minutes. And now I do want to say that this 3D wave idea is not at all mine. Um, I think Sandy's Organized Chaos did this first. She turned everybody on to this glitter snow stuff. And then I just saw, as I was working on this, I saw Courtney's Customs come out with a similar design. Go check both of them out. I'll link them both down below in the description box. And we're going to continue on with our glitter snow waves. I'm gonna move into using this kind of like stiff angled brush here because I really wanna get this like kind of foamy like look here. I don't want it to be one too uniform. So I'm gonna try and start to move these waves a little bit less just flowy and straight. I want them to kind of just look like they naturally crashed onto the shore. And I'm still kind of like flicking back as I go here because I want it to just look like that natural wave crash. So there's what we've got so far. It does look a little bit like super diagonal. So I'm going to bring out one of these to be kind of different. It's a little too uniform for me. Now you can find a natural stopping point anytime you would like to, of course. Um, but I'm going to just kind of try and make these look a little bit more organic almost. Just go until you feel like comfortable with how it looks. Now you can kind of like push the stuff forward. I think Courtney did that in her video. You can kind of push it and then you naturally have that little wave. I kind of like to just like tap it in and then pull back for your little crashing moment. But whatever technique is easiest for you, you can do that. There's really no wrong way to do it, I don't think. I've actually decided that I'm gonna do a, like a second little round of this wave, <laughs> like a double crashing kind of, just to make it look a little bit more deep add a little bit more depth you know to the water look just make it a little bit more kind of detailed and continue to do my little flicking motions here just to add some more kind of dimension you definitely don't have to do this if you don't want to totally up to you And these don't all have to be connected. You can see that they're not, they're not connected on mine. They're just kind of, you know, random waves crashing in the ocean. And that's kind of how it, how it goes, I think. This would also be a really good opportunity if you have any areas of your glitter blending that you don't really like or that, you know, just didn't turn out really the way you wanted them to. You can just cover up any areas that aren't blended and no one will ever know. So just take it as an opportunity to kind of like fix any mistakes you have. No one's going to know. I think we're kind of, whoops, getting there. I'll just fix this one a little bit, make it a little more robust. Okay. With a paper towel, I'm just going to act like that never happened. <laughs> okay, so there's our waves. We're going to let this dry at least 24 hours. 
After my waves were fully dried, I added one coat of epoxy over the waves. That coat was about 30 milliliters. I let that spin or dry overnight. And now I'm going to go in and do my final round of sanding before I add my last coats of epoxy. So I'm going to use my Dremel here. I got this at Walmart and I'm just going to sand down the top rim of my cup to expose that fine line of stainless steel so that we can get a really good final seal with our epoxy. I also sanded down the bottom of my cup and then I washed my cup with dish soap and water and then I added actually three final coats of epoxy. Each coat was about 15 milliliters. And once those were all cured, we are all done. So here is the final result. I had so much fun making this cup and I really hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you so much and I will see you in my next video. Oh, and Bailey says hi. Okay, love you, bye.